This is actually a mixer that we uh, pulled from our Litchfield Park location when we took that spot over. We finally have it up and running, so it's joining our fleet of mixers here. It's a RAM model, and uh, kind of what's neat about it is it actually has two different bowls. This is our Hobart bowl, but it has a bowl this exact size, and it has a smaller bowl, 40 uh, quart bowl, so you can, you can do different batch sizes. For us, putting another planetary in here means that our team that's doing a lot of prep work, uh, which we use the planetaries for a lot, uh, everything from making frangipan to, is that what you guys are doing right now in, in okay. here? Is morning bun filling right now. Morning bun filling. So yeah, a lot of our fillings are, are items that go with our products are made in a planetary mixer. They're very versatile. Planetary mixers have different attachments and that's what makes them versatile. You can mix dough in them. They don't mix dough quite as well as a spiral mixer does, but you can still do it, and you can do fillings and all kinds of other things. This is a premium mixer in comparison to the other mixers we have. Ram is considered you know, a higher-end brand, although the mixer is small for our size, operation, which is why it's not in our Mesa facility. I would gladly trade this out for the planetary mixer we have there, which even though I love ABS equipment, that particular mixer, the planetary one that we have there is not my favorite uh, for, for a number of reasons, mostly when it does dough, which it's not really optimized to do, but when it does do dough, it doesn't have the action that Sometimes it doesn't seem like it's really moving the dough. It seems like it's just kind of going around in a circle. Uh, whereas we've had a really reliable time with our old uh, Hobart, which we affectionately call the General. Uh, this one has, you know, electronic controls. We're going to lift it up, and we just got it up and running. It's got uh, the ability to set a timer, or you can not. You can have all kinds of speed configurations. So this is super fast, 100 RPMs. It has some photos even here that you can see, okay, this is the range for a whisk. This is the range for a paddle. And then everything down here is the range for a dough hook. So it has quite a bit of speed variability. Beautiful mixer, we're excited to have it in our fleet and I just gave um, one of our team members here a bit of training on it because uh, like anything else when you see a new piece of machinery and you haven't been trained on it, it can be a little bit intimidating. This is also to the team here at Shea a new piece of machinery and one that I never really had the luxury of using in the garage nor in my time you know, being really involved in mixing at Mesa but fantasized about these things uh, all the time. So you've seen me weigh countless amounts of water on a scale. This is a water meter, and it's a, a pretty simple device, really. Basically, this is hooked up to the water meter itself, and I can hook it right onto my mixing bowl. I can say how much water I want, so let's dispense six liters of water here, and I'm gonna dispense it at 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, I can change that out with this little mixer. So uh, I'm gonna hit the start button, and water will automatically dispense to the amount that I want, and there's a running total on the screen, and a consistent temperature. So I just dispensed you know, six kilos of water and didn't have to measure a thing, didn't have to take out a scale, didn't have to take out any extra buckets, didn't have to run back and forth to a sink, uh, didn't have to spend a lot of time. You still have to spend time messing with temperature. So when you first come in here in the day, there's a hot water line and a cold water line. And of course, when you first start, the temperature is not regulated. So the first thing that you have to do, which we've already done today, is you have to just dispense some water. 
and try to get it set up the way you want. Now we kind of have it configured to the temperature setting that we want and I'm hoping that this pretty much sticks for this facility. We don't use a ton of water in here for any other purposes. So Brandon, so you know, you might not even have to mess with this much, just like dispense water at the beginning of your day and see if it kind of goes to the 26. We're, and it's weird because we pretty much operate in the metric system except for we, I still don't have a concept of temperature as well. I, I mean, obviously 100 degrees is boiling water and zero is freezing, yeah. but I don't really have that uh, sensitivity for the range. 26, what is 26 degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit? So that's 78. It's a little bit on the low end for, for water, uh, for what we typically do. Uh, so we might actually want to crank it up a little bit. Let me see if I can get that done. What's tricky is you have to change the temperature setting while it's dispensing. So this entire setup is better suited for our big spiral mixer uh, than for the planetary. Uh, but the planetary actually has a removable bowl, so if I'm going to dump a bunch of water for testing, that's the place to do it. Let's see if we can get it to a better temperature. What is 84 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? Okay, so 2829 is where we want it. Let's see what I can do. I'm going to actually up the amount, that way I have more time while it's dispensing, because it dispenses quite fast. and it can be pretty sensitive. All right, so I got it into that 28 range and hopefully it will more or less stay here. So the team in the morning will come and dispense, let's say 10 liters of water in order to get all the water uh, steady in the lines, meaning the hot water is truly hot and the cold water is the water from our tap. You can hook this up to a chiller so if you need colder water, which many bakers do, we, we employ the auto lease. We actually have exceptionally strong flour. So a lot of our mix times are much lower than mix times in Europe. Actually, Sakharm was just telling me about a soft wheat that he was using to make a bread over the weekend in Germany. And my immediate thought was, okay, he probably had to mix that, that dough for quite a while. Uh, I saw it firsthand in Portugal, just how long the mixes were going comparatively. It was a bit of an eye opener for me. But if we were to split this line, this cold water line off and hook it up to a chiller, which actually uh, can chill the water even colder than tap. Our, our tap here is probably around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but a chiller will bring it down even to 40, let's say. So then you have the ability to mix hot and super cold and achieve whatever temperature you, you'd like in that range. Whereas our kind of lowest range that we could go right now would be that 60 degrees. We could also just add ice, but that would defeat the doser. So now we're back to uh, doing things the other way. Now, if you remember our pretzel video that we did, we actually did use ice water, and basically ever since we, ever since the mix, I regretted the choice of using ice water. We borrowed a way of doing it that Satkaram was familiar with in Germany and that many bakers would do, but the thing is, you really have to adjust to your environment. and. Uh, our flour dictates lower mix times and higher temperatures. Our auto lease process also, and the fact that our space is air conditioned, that's a huge uh, consideration because uh, as again, using him as an example, since all of you are now becoming more and more familiar with uh, my dear friend, in his bakery that he works at in Germany, it's not air conditioned. And so the ambient temperature can be 100 degrees Fahrenheit now imagine if you take dough out of a mixer and now it's sitting at 100 degrees. It's going to be warming up. In our case, we're working in a really comfortable uh, ambient environment. You don't see us sweating our faces off in here, which actually means that the temperature of the dough is going downward after coming out of the mixer. 
So that's a little bit on water dosers. Uh, I just came back from a quick weekend tour of bakeries in Southern California, and this was a primary staple in all the bakeries, and all four bakeries that I visited seem like they might be at slightly lower production volumes than us right now, but this was a big investment. So uh, this isn't something that you really should wait a whole lot for. In fact, I think getting one reduces errors. Uh, it is a big investment. I think it's a few thousand dollars for this one, and this is the most basic water meter that there is. They make fancier ones. I think the fancier ones have more digital controls over temperature. You see, I had to kind of be really sensitive with this. Uh, so that's the trade-off, I think, uh, in getting an even more expensive one. But for us, this was already a luxury, and I think it's sufficient for our needs. It's more than we've ever had. So that's a little bit about water dosers and our new mixer.